What's up dogs? Just like I've done in my EF 50 millimeter video, the punchline is coming to you right off the top. Here it is. If you've found this video through actively searching for the RF 50 millimeters, you should probably just go ahead and treat yourself. Get it. Go ahead and buy the lens. You'll use it. You'll like it. And if not, there's plenty of new photographers coming to the RF system that would take this off your hands for $150 in the coming weeks and months. I've watched a ton of videos about this lens to augment my personal experience with it so that you didn't necessarily need to. And just like the EF 50mm 1.8, it is the epitome of value. Is it the best lens ever? Of course not. We're talking 200 bucks. But is it good, compact, lightweight, and sharp enough wide open at the glorious 1.8 that you otherwise might struggle to acquire with another RF lens because they cost so much damn money? Yes, 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 and no. Just kidding, four yeses, four yeses. Now my name is Dan and blah blah, intro intro, whatever. Need you to subscribe if you like this one, my dogs. Trying to trick 1,000 of you to join the Dan Yashal Creative Army, and we're on our way. Build quality. I find it ever so slightly humorous when people give minutes of airtime to discuss the build quality of this lens. It's plastic, there isn't a ton of metal, and it's not weather sealed. Canon even combined the focus ring with the function ring. It turns super smoothly and I use it for ISO. But the one quirk to note here is that when you shoot manual, I think you have no other choice but to explicitly check manual focus in the menu system. That's a downer, but if you're largely auto-focusing, then just set it to function and forget it. Maybe we'll get a 50 millimeter f1.4 version soon. One that has two separate rings, is slightly larger and has better build quality. But until then, that's all we're going to say about the build quality on this lens. Image quality. Continuing our fast and non-technical review for beginner and intermediate photographers in the Dan Yashman Creative Army, the reason to get this lens is because you're getting a cheap lens that's sharp in the middle, wide open, and it delivers on that promise. If you're familiar with the EF version, it's performing about the same, though if there is an advantage on the RF, others are saying that the better image quality in the center extends farther across the frame than it did on the EF version. I don't currently have both to compare side by side in person, and while I genuinely appreciate that others are pixel peeping and sharing their findings, I think it's a bit of a moot point with this lens. And that's because the RF version is so much more compact than if you were to use the EF version with the adapter. And it costs about the same price as you would pay for the EF version plus the adapter. If you can find the EF version super cheap, second hand off somebody, then fine, I'll allow it. Otherwise, the RF is going to be the better value here. Pair it with the RP for a lightweight setup. We're not talking EFS 24 millimeter pancake status, but if you're one of those people that desires the lightest possible combo, this new Nifty 50 pairs perfectly with the RP, especially for photo first shooters. On multiple occasions, I left the house with the RP and the 50 attached, and I doubled back thinking that I had forgotten a battery that it was so light, only to realize what a fool I had been. I am not one of those people that goes for the lightest kit possible, but I know some of you are out there, and this is for you. When I made my one lens to rule them all, RF 24 to 105 video, I hiked 11 miles with that puppy. And let me tell you, I would have been happier hiking with this 50 millimeter attached instead. Perfect entry. Given how versatile, affordable, and compact this 50 mil is, I think it's the perfect pairing with the Canon RP to jump into the Canon RF lineup. And you can do so for about 1200 bucks. $1,300 gets you the RP and the kit zoom, but I think most people are going to want to swap out that kit zoom relatively quickly. And I think it makes more sense to get a versatile focal length of 50 with some sweet, sweet bokeh. People equate that blurred background with professionalism, and I think you can grab this 50 and jump right into portrait or product photography, then save, then get something else. <clears throat> so, why didn't I buy this? Like the 800 f11 Super Telephoto, I rented this cheap, and due to my red ring daydreaming, I also haven't ruled out looking at the big boy 50 mil. If I end up skipping that, I'll eventually pick this up. In the meantime, I have the 35 millimeter macro that has ended up being my main money maker. I try to be really intentional about the number of pieces in my kit, and until I solidify plans for my own personal future roadmap a bit more, I'm holding off on a buy right this second. $25 off any rental with my code below, and leave a comment what should I rent and review here next. Last thing, there is a price difference between these two, but if you can only get one lens in order to keep your kit simple, your two most similar options are the 50mm and 35mm. Let's go ahead and compare those now. 